So earlier this week, I thought Hylian's earnings was going to be the fantastic earnings and Jivo's was going to be the mediocre ones. Well, I got that backwards. Spoiler alert, I really like those earnings. We're going to talk about the bad, we're going to talk about the good, and then we're going to talk about what I'm doing with the stock. Okay, so first we're going to get the bad out of the way. Now, there is there are a lot of things that I liked about this earnings report. That I, I, I absolutely loved the entire, I loved the conference call, I loved everything, but as part as, you know, stock overflow, we got to talk about the bad first. Now, anyone who's done research on Jivo or has been following them for some time, you know that the money is coming over the next several years. They got billions and billions on the table, just rating, rating the trickle in over the next, you know, five to 10 years. However, right now, at this precise moment in time, the revenue is just not coming in, just not coming in at all. So we are talking about 0.1 million for the quarter compared to 3.8 in Q1 2020 last year. And we're going to talk about the reasons for that in a second. Loss for from operations, 9.9 .9 million versus 8, point, versus 8 million last year. And as far as analyst estimates, they missed on both EPS and revenue. Now, there is a good reason for that. Now, you can pause and read this if you want to. I'm not going to read all of it. But basically, the gist is that for the last you know couple of years or so, most of the revenue has been coming in through their Laverna facility and through their Southampton facility. Both of those facilities have been shut down since last year due to COVID and also unfavorable commodity markets. Now, as far now, I'm pretty new to the commodity game, but my understanding is that you know specific commodities are very cyclical. There are some, I mean, there are some seasons where certain commodities like ethanol and stuff is very desirable and then there are some in which they are not these facilities got hit with a double whammy like they both have been shut down since last year and as of the time of this video they are currently shut down so they are not producing revenue for this company at all now there is some good news that came out of this earnings report their laverna facility is expected to start back up in june 2021 to start producing isobutanol hopefully i pronounced that correctly and their Southampton facility is uh, supposed to start uh, producing uh, premium gasoline or jet fuel starting this year. So starting in June, their revenue is expected to start, you know, trickling in and picking back up slowly. But as of right now, they are funding themselves through issuing stock and bonds. The good stuff's coming, guys. Just bear with me a little while longer. We got to talk about one more. I don't want to. I don't know if it's a bad thing, but it's something that we do have to discuss. So the other was call it questionable thing because I, I don't know if it's good or bad or not. Maybe I'm not smart enough to understand is that during the earnings call and we're going to talk about that call in detail. Well, in more detail in a bit, Patrick took time out of the beginning of that call to talk about a certain proposal as far as the whole proxy vote thing coming up. So proposal number four is where they're asking stockholders to improve an amendment to increase the number of authorized shares of common stock for 200 million 250 million to 500 million. Now, I think investors are understandably concerned about that because that means that if Jivo authorizes it and goes, you know, goes through with the whole thing, that all the shares that you know shareholders currently have are going to be diluted. He wanted to defend it, saying that you know approving it doesn't mean that they're going to issue those new shares immediately. They just want to have the option to do so in order to fund future projects going forward. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing ultimately again i'm probably not smart enough to understand it but that is that is uh, an understandable concern okay now we're going to get into the good stuff and there is a lot of good stuff we're going to talk about now i know some of my viewers out there don't like profanity and so i'm going to if, if you're one of those viewers i'm going to need you to skip ahead like 30 to 45 seconds so the first thing i want to say is patrick gruber that ceo that guy can fucking sell himself man he absolutely knows how to sell his fucking business like i went into that earnings call with not a lot of expectations but like that guy is very charismatic he is very passionate he's very intellectual i'm looking at my notes here like he's very proactive like he offers you know he's very knowledgeable about the you know the subject matter about biofuels and stuff like that like this guy is an absolute treat to listen to I absolutely loved listening listening to him during that entire conference call. Like during the Q and A, he was absolutely confident, 100 percent. He left no doubt in my mind that this guy is a good leader. Like, and I, I think 
I think he's going to drive the company to fantastic places over the next five to 10 years. So let's take a quick drive by of their balance sheet. Now, I'm not going to show you the income statement or the cash flow statement because we know both of those are kind of a wash right now, especially with their Laverna facility shut down, their South Hamilton facility shut down. There's no, there's nothing to be gained by looking at that. But their balance sheet, look at their assets. Now, they raised a lot of cash through their uh, common stock offering and their bond offering. And we're going to talk about why I think they did that a little, little bit later on. But that does mean that their assets to liabilities... Now, they did double their liabilities, but I'm not too worried about that because, I mean, their assets totally dwarf it. Absolutely. Like, their balance sheet is beyond incredible right now. Okay, so for starters, Jivo broke ground. I think we already knew this if you've been keeping up with the with the news in the past month or so. Jivo was on target and successfully broke ground on their renewable natural gas project. So, so Jivo has been... Jivo is, is is building a factory to start, you know, producing renewable natural gas. And they, they were supposed to start this year, which they already have. And they're expected to finish it in early 22, early 2022. And they are expecting their RNG project to generate 9 to $16 million of cash for Jivo on an annual basis starting in late 2012. Now, I know in the, in the world of finance and, you know, multi-corporation stuff that 9 to 16 million of cash isn't massive or whatever but i mean that's cash they didn't have and for a small up and co up and coming company this is probably a lot of money in february 2021 jibo signed an amendment to its fuel sales agreement with scandinavian airline system for sustainable aviation fuel patrick added some more color on this on his q a they had an existing agreement with uh, sas and sas came back for more they wanted to upscale their agreement to increase the number of uh that they increase the volume that they were buying from Jivo. We're talking we are now talking around 100 million in revenue across the life of the contract. Now that is absolutely amazing. So this right here is a part that I think investors really love. We're going we're going to get we're going to get into this right now. It's about their net zero one project. So it started it's on schedule and Patrick like you got to listen to the earnings report after this the er the earnings call you don't just read this don't just read the transcript you got to listen to the man sell it it is a beautiful beautiful piece of speech right there so basically the net zero project is on track and it's supposed to be done in 2024 and the front engineering design front end engineering design work is on track now he also uh said he also added in the earnings call that this is ahead of schedule now Front end engineering design is just project pre work. So the pre work is ahead of schedule. Now, one thing he added is that the EBITDA for each net zero plant, and there's going to be more. We're going to talk about that in a second. The EBITDA for each net zero plant will be $100 million per year once operating. And that's just on the plant itself. That's not counting any other, other sources of revenue that's going to be coming in. So let's talk about that net zero project and the customer, de customer demand for their products. Now, this right here is a slide from their last quarterly report. Their last one, not this one, their last one. So they, they already had a very, very attractive uh, amount of customer demand. We're talking $1.5 billion in take or pay contracts. So these are contracts that have already been signed. These aren't customers that Jivo is looking to get. These are contracts that, that have already been signed. And we're talking big name customers like here, right here. Delta, SAS, City of Seattle. Like these are take or pay contracts that are worth 1.5 billion over the next i think six or seven years once it gets up and running in 2024 this was last quarter now i want you to look at this so first of all they went from from 1.5 to 1.6 billion and active contracts in place active so this is money that is coming in as long as jivo holds up their end of the bargain also market traction they went from 49 uh, total volumes currently contracted to 54 so there's that but here's the important part this was where he took it home they went from 6 billion and actively discussed and actively negotiated contracts to 10.6 billion in those same contracts with high quality customers now this isn't these are contracts that are being negotiated right now like this is the demand and basically as far as the timetables it's pretty much as soon as Jivo can build the capacity to produce what the customers are asking for. So basically, Jivo has what they call a good problem to have. They're getting more de more demand that they're able to produce. And so 
Part of that is that Jibo needs to build more net zero plants. So all that cash that was being raised through their stock offerings and their bond offerings and stuff, and the whole thing with their increase of authorized shares, that whole proxy vote thing. I mean, I think, well, I more than think, I think Patrick Gruber, I think, alluded to this, is so that they can step up their production game. Uh, they said, well, Patrick said during the, I don't know if it was during the prepared remarks or the Q&A, that... Um, they're going to be looking to uh, to complete to start and complete their net zero one and net zero two, which are two different plants at the same time, and that's so they can better meet the the massive demands that Jibo's talking about that these customers are having. So yeah, there is a lot of money on the table for patient investors as long as Jibo holds up their end of the bargain, as long as Jibo can meet those demands that customers are having. The only downside is. That if Jivo can't meet those those demands, if Jivo, you know, uh, has delays in constructions that you know pushes ahead the deadline, that could be a problem with that money coming in, especially if those take or pay contracts get broken. However, from what I heard on the conference call and all the news I've read so far, Jivo is far from any kind of delays. So what am I doing with Jivo? Well, call me crazy if you think this is crazy, but. I'm starting to think Jivo's a little more than a spec stock in my book. I mean, as long as Jivo pulls up there into the bargain, at least as long as Jivo doesn't have any delays in construction and, you know, meeting their own deadlines, I think this is easy money. Now, don't take my opinion for it. I'm not an expert. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not even good at this. I'm just a guy with an opinion and a YouTube channel. But I'm having a hard time seeing how this isn't easy money right now. So as far as what I'm doing, I tried to load up today, but it went up 23.94%. My limit order never got filled, so obviously I didn't load up. But what I will be doing is, if this price keeps dropping, the more this, this price keeps dropping, the more I want to keep buying. I don't quite have a limit yet. I have a cost basis of $600 and $6 per share. But as of right now, as long as this price keeps dropping from here on out, I'm going to keep buying. But anyways, take care, have a great day, and eat your vegetables.